Hi, I'm Erin. Welcome to my garden. Today I'm going to talk about seed starting. It's time to start planting your brassicas, so today we're going to do some kale. Oh, that's Margaret. <laughs> Mr. Margaret, one of my chickens. So for kale, it's a brassica. Uh, you plant it just like anything else. One of the things you want to do uh, with brassicas is make sure you plant it fairly close to the surface. The smaller the seed, the closer they need to be to the top of the soil. All their energy to sprout is in this little tiny package and they need to be closer to the surface the smaller they are so they can get up and get to light. So I prefer to buy soil that's already mixed with amendments, uh, natural amendments, things from the sea, things from earthworms, bat guano, stuff like that, so I don't have to do any fertilizing. So what I do is I use the soil and I keep it in a bucket because I'm always out here potting something up. And I put a screen over it because out here under the oaks, leaves are constantly falling. Leaves make it a little harder for the seeds to sprout. I use a scoop, dollar store scoop for chicken, for dog food, works great. Get a little bit, sprinkle it in your to-go containers. And now your pots are ready to go. So now I'll show you how I quickly and easily plant seeds. I pour them out into the palm of my hand. I get quite a few, like I said, I actually germinate a lot at one time. This would be good for you too if you're a beginner and you're not sure how many seeds are going to germinate. Go ahead. So I have my container of soil ready, my seeds are out and ready, I just sprinkle them. Like you're decorating a cake, just a few sprinkles, let them roll where they want, kind of evenly disperses. And then I scrunch the soil a little, little bit to mix them up in the top layer. With bigger seeds, you'll actually go through and poke little holes and you put them in the holes so they're a little farther down in the surface. But this is how I do small seeds like brassicas. So planting seeds, you've got your soil, your seeds are in your soil, but we need moisture. For me, I find it easiest to use basters. Basters make it easy to apply a little bit of water at one time. And it's gentle on your soil. So I just water everything in. You want to eliminate the air gaps between the seed and the soil so the seed gets good connection with the soil and the moisture in the soil. Once you put the seeds in there and the water in there, you put the lid on it and it's like a mini greenhouse. My, these types of to-go containers don't have lids, so you can use uh, saran wrap, the clear plastic wrap, um, shower caps with the little elastic. Those are at the dollar store, really easy to find. Um, for your bigger containers, they come with their own lids. So you've got your mini house, and here you can see the condensation in the top. So it's kind of like a rainforest. The water is constantly cycling through the pot and keeping your seeds moist on top so they germinate. So it's been a couple of weeks and my seeds have germinated. Now I have lots of little tiny sprouts. If you leave them planted close together like this, they're not going to get very big because the roots need room to spread out. So what I do now is I'll take them out of this container and give them their own pot so they can grow until it's ready to go into the garden. So I'm going to show you how I take the seedlings out of the tray and put them in the pots. There's several different ways to do this and several names for it. Um, I call it pricking out, but there's other ways and names. I get a small tool. This is actually a tong. I cut it in half with some wire metal scissors and uh, normally I bend the end a little bit. I have multiple ones but this will work great. You want to pull them back to where you can find the, the roots and just scoop underneath them and pull out a clump. Lay it on the tray and slowly work the soil off just very lightly touching it. Your plants will slowly pull apart Try not to handle them by the stems, handle them by the leaves. Leaves will grow new leaves, the stem is its only stem, so if you squeeze it too hard, you'll break the capillary action of the moisture through the stem. So now I have a few plants pulled apart, and I'll show you how to put them in the pots. Containers to choose for your plants can be store-bought containers, like I use the three and a half inch pots. You can also use yogurt cups. Soho cups, milk jugs, half gallon milk jugs cut in half, anything you can find around your house that you can put a couple holes in the bottom so there's drainage, works great. I'm gonna use these pots here, they're three and a half inch pots. I, your pots have trays, has, has holes in the bottoms, but you really wanna have them in a tray that has holes in the bottom. 
This way, if you overwater them, you can take them out of the main container and let them drain out. Or if you need to water and you prefer to water from the bottom, which is an option, or you can water from the top, you can take it out of the tray, put water in the tray, and then return your pots to the tray. There's different ways to get them in the pot, just like everything. Do what works best for you. Um, I like to use my fingers, as you can see. I'm a dirt girl. <laughs> I love to get my hands dirty. Um, you can use a pencil. You can use a dabber. This is a dibber or dabber. Um, they have measurements on them so you know how deep to make your holes if you're starting seeds. In this case, for starting seedlings, I make holes in my soil. I actually dig it down where it's an inch or an inch and a half or two inches deep and then I'll show you why. So we'll do a few of those. Where you can use your finger. Then you take your seedlings and you wanna grab it by the leaves and you just wanna kinda of drop it in the hole. I'll use my finger on the roots and I'll actually push it down on the roots to get it to go down as well. I've not had problems with that. But usually your hole is big enough it'll fall in. And then I'll pinch it. I'll pinch the soil around the plant. And that way, again, just like when we started the seeds, you want good soil contact, in this case with roots. And now those six plants are all, all potted up and ready to go. But again, just like with your seeds, Moisture. Moisture is really important, especially when you just planted something because you've got air pockets in there between the soil and the seeds. You want your roots to have good connection with the soil. So I'm going to add some water. I like the baser because it's really easy to water down the soil without applying too much pressure to the plant. I'll use these all through the growing process while they're in the greenhouse. Sometimes it can be a little time consuming, but when you have young, fresh plants and they're really tender and susceptible to being knocked over or sunk under the soil, this is a great way to water around the plant and not hit the leaves. All right, so we showed you how to transplant seeds into pots. And this is my greenhouse. This is where I put my plants. And I understand you may not have this nice of a space or big of a space, but plants can be started in any quantity in any space. You just need to have a few key things. One of them is light. So in my greenhouse, I use some LED lights. Um, this was a kit package from Home Depot. It was eight or four, maybe two sets of four. What I liked about these is the cords all hook in line. So it's like Christmas lights. You hook one to the next, to the next, to the next. And it works great in my big space. Here's my trays where I've started uh, brassicas, kale. This is Chinese cabbage. We got some lettuce mix on the end, pop choy. You see some Swiss chard and some spinaches. And then back in the back, some kale. On a different note, but demonstrated here, I use tulle, which is, you think of as prom dresses or other fancy dresses. I use it to keep moths out. Moths, cabbage moths in particular, lay their eggs on the undersides of your leaves of your brassicas, your cabbage, your kale, your broccoli and they eat the leaves when the caterpillars hatch. So I use this tool and I clip it together in my greenhouse to keep the moths out because they're attracted to the light and it keeps them off the plants and the plants can sprout, germinate and grow in here in a safe environment so they're pretty when they go out to the garden. One more suggestion would be to find a part of your yard that gets good strong morning sun and put your seedlings out in the sun. From the beginning, it's fine. I've never had a problem putting my seedlings out in the beginning and let them have a few hours of sunlight in the morning and then it'd be dappled sun like we're in right now the rest of the day and maybe a, a bit of sun in the evening. Just make sure it's not strong, intense light throughout the day when they're young. Plants do best with about 14 to 16 hours of light. If you look at time and temperature, the lighting varies from day to day. In the summer we have 16-20 hours of sun. In the winter we get down to about 10 hours of sunlight a day. So in order to keep that number of hours at a good number, you need to supplement your lighting. It seems technical. There could be a lot of involved and there's a lot of information out there, different ways to do it. For me, I feel that lighting is important. It makes the plants grow. We have a lot of sunlight in Texas, so people may think because there's a lot of sunlight that that's good and your plants should be out in the sun. But when they're little tiny seedlings, they are like babies. They 
are affected by intense light the same way our babies would be with sunburn. Uh, plants, the leaves get spots on them. It makes them weaker, they can't grow, grow as healthy. But if you do want to use lights, because you can keep the length of light on the plants longer than you can with sun, which is a critical element in good healthy growth of your seedling, you can buy those little tiny ca under cabinet mount lights. You can buy a light bulb, maybe with a crown on it, like you see at Home Depot, so you can focus the lighting on your seedlings. There's any number of options that you can use. Even a lamp with a 100 watt light bulb will be better than nothing. People do like to think that they can put it in a window, but to be honest with you, the lighting won't be bright enough and your, light, your plant's gonna fall over and lean towards the light and you won't have a strong, healthy seedling. So those are zinnias, one of my favorite flowers in the garden. They go on and on. But if you leave the blooms and you don't pick them off, Mother Nature gives you new plants. So as part of the philosophy of less is more, I let Mother Nature do the work for me. And I'm gonna dig these up because I don't want all these plants here going into the fall. I wanna plant them somewhere else. And I'm gonna do them just like I do the little seedlings when I dig them out of the tray and put them in their own pots. I'm gonna wiggle the soil a little bit to try to get the plants. Somewhere in there is in one more. And then I'll go and put these in separate pots. And then when I'm ready and found my spot in the garden, I'm gonna put them there. Another option I like to do in the winter when I'm getting my spring starts is I do a lot of my sprouting inside. And to minimize the amount of space I take, I use condiment containers. So I just put a little bit of water in the bottom. And normally I'll cut a little bit of paper towel, two or three layers, and I'll layer it at the bottom so the paper towel absorbs the water, and then I sprinkle the seeds on top. Thanks for joining me in the garden today. I'm glad that you were here. If you have any questions, please tag me in the Facebook group. I'll be happy to answer your questions.